Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. Well, as you probably already noticed, I'm dealing with a bit of a summer cold, so I hope you'll please excuse the voice. Now, picking up from the simplified startup video based on only what's required to start up the hook in DCS at its initial release, we'll now discuss how to taxi in two different types of takeoff. Now, like the startup, we'll just focus on what is required in the game at the initial launch. You can still find the complete guide of the real procedures in the CH47F guide. Also, I'm sorry this video took so long following the simple startup video. Before I could record this video, we wanted to tune the unique takeoff performance and characteristics to more closely match the real aircraft. Although there's still further work to do, I think you'll find the hook a very easy aircraft to hover and take off. Let's get started. First, to pick up where we left off on the startup video, let's go up to the overhead panel and make sure that the aft and forward auxiliary pumps are set to on for both engine one and engine two. And we can also set the uh, cross feed switch to off. Now in the earlier video, I had some uh, of you ask, well, why can't the uh, flight engineer from station three here um, adjust the settings on the overhead? Well, it's not really the job of the flight engineer in the hook. Uh, he's mainly or her are responsible here in the cabin. It's up to the pilots uh, to manipulate the overhead panel. Okay, so to taxi the hook, we have one, two options, either on four wheels or two wheels. And in this video, we're just gonna focus on the four wheel option. At a later point, I'll try to do a two wheel uh, taxi video as well. Now to steer the aircraft on the ground with four wheels, we're gonna use the hydraulically powered wheel in the aft right of the helicopter. This one right here. And the advantage of doing this rather than using the rotor system is it's going to require a lot less power and because a lot less power a lot less rotor downwash. To steer that wheel we're going to come here to the center console and go to the steer sub panel which you can see is dominated by this big dial here which we go to the left and the right and as you might imagine that's going to move our wheel based on the setting of our uh, swivel button here. So right now it's in lock, so it will lock the wheel at the current position of the dial. If you go to unlock, which is basically for your cast screen, or if you go to steer, where we can use the knob to directly uh, steer that rear wheel. Let's take a look at some of the uh, axis settings that we'll be needing for uh, taxiing. So let's scrolls. Let's take a look at uh, axes first. So first, we have our uh, flight control collective. Now, actually in the hook, uh, we actually re need to rename this to power lever. Uh, down here near the bottom, we're gonna have our wheel brakes as an axis. And then you also have the option as an axis for the steering control knob to control that uh, wheel in the back right. But I'm not gonna do that. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I assigned it to a couple buttons on my throttle. So let's go to search, type in steer, and we can see uh, steering control knob, rotate left and rotate right, which I have assigned to buttons 10 and 12 on my throttle. Okay. So now using those two buttons, I can rotate that knob to the left and to the right, which if you go externally, you can see it reflected here as well. And as we taxi, the uh, left wheel will follow in unison. get moving, all we're going to have to do is uh, add a little power on the power lever, make sure that the emergency brake is in. And to steer, again, we're just going to be using the uh, swivel uh, option left and right. We can modulate the speed with the power lever as well as the wheel brakes. And you probably wouldn't do it in the real helicopter, but technically you could uh, you know, use the cyclic forward and back to adjust your speed as well. Okay, so let's give this a try. Let's uh, add a little power. Moving forward. Let's go to the left. Straighten out. Add a little power. To the right. Straighten out. And back to the left. As you can see, easy peasy.
Now we get lined up here down the prepared surface. Okay, straightened out. Now we're going to go to lock, lock us straight ahead, and reduce the power lever, and we should be good to go. Okay, next step is we'll take a look at takeoffs. Now, before we pull power, let's do a little bit of housekeeping uh, first. Let's take a look at the basic controls for flight. So we'll escape, adjust controls, let's go to axes commands. And of course, first, which we just talked about, we have the uh, collective, which again is going to be the power lever. Below that, I have the uh, yaw control, which is going to be the anti-torque pedals. I use an axes on my throttle. Of course, you could use pedals or God help you if you wanted to use uh, keys. Then on the cyclic, of course, we have cyclic pitch, cyclic roll, of which you could highlight the box, hit axis tune, adjust your dead zone and your curve. I use a 3 and a 12. That's what works for me. Okay. And last, of course, we have basically it's a, a force trim system where you place the pedal or cyclic controls where you want. Hit and release the button back to uh, center, and that creates a new center point for the pedals or the cyclic. Again, just like other hel helicopters you're probably used to. So to do that, let's do a search, trim, and we can see uh, trim control, button four, which I think is the trigger on my cyclic. Okay, out. So those are the basic controls. And now let's take a look at some of the uh, basic flight instrumentation on the vertical situation display with the VSD. On the VSD, in this case, I have an HSI here in the bottom, my attitude director here in the center, my yaw and slip indicator here centered. To the right is my barometric altitude, with my radar altitude below it. On the left side is my airspeed. At the very bottom is my uh, rotor uh, RPM percentage, and at the top is my torque percentage. Okay, so for this first takeoff, we'll do a VMC, or a Visual Meteorological Conditions, which is basically going to be a short rolling takeoff when we have a prepared surface ahead of us, uh, like we do today. Let's do some follow checks. Make sure it's during Nava Center and that it's locked. That the uh, Digital Advanced Flight Control System knob is set to both, and the LCT switch, or the Longitudinal Cyclic Trim, is set to Auto. Uh, you'll see that when these are enabled, it's going to make this aircraft super easy to fly. Honestly, I think the easiest aircraft to fly in DCS. Uh, but these two systems are certainly not going to be done. We're still adding some additional features that will um, impact how the aircraft handles its attitude and also even coordinate the turns a little bit later. Make sure the parking brake is in. Brakes are off. So to take off in VMC, we're not going to touch the cyclic. We're not going to touch the pedals. All we're going to do is start uh, adding power from the power lever, let the aircraft roll forward, and let it come airborne. Okay, so pulling power, rolling forward, continue to add power, and we're airborne. Five degree pitch down, and we should be rising about 500 feet per minute. Set trim. And we can adjust our course with the stick as well as the pedals. So as you can see, very, very easy to take this aircraft uh, up in the air with a short rolling takeoff or a DMC. Last, we'll take a look at a hover takeoff. And as you might imagine, when using this, we don't have a prepared surface ahead of us uh, like we did in the rolling takeoff. Uh, but I think you'll see that this is almost just as easy as a rolling takeoff. Uh, as before, make sure that our steering is centered and locked, that fix is set to both, LCTs are auto. But a new indicator we have is this one here, which is the uh, stick longitudinal position indicator. And you'll see as we move the cyclic forward, the stick, it goes up to positive two, we pull back, negative two. And this is in inches. So for a hover takeoff, we're going to set the cyclic to 1.5 inches right about there. 
set trim, and that's our new trim center position for our cyclic. And as you might imagine, we're doing this because this will then prevent us from rolling forward just like we did in the rolling takeoff. But as you might imagine, again, as soon as we get airborne, we'll need to move the cyclic back to neutral uh, to keep us from uh, flying backwards. Uh, to take off, we're just going to add power. I'm not going to touch the cyclic immediately or the pedals. Okay, so adding power. Okay, pitch four to five degrees. Set the trim, and we're good. So I think you agree that taking off in the hook, be it a rolling takeoff or a hover takeoff, it's about the easiest thing you could do in DCS right now. Anyhow, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.